one of the books you're very famous for is called the uh, No Asshole Rule. <laughs> to my lot in life, I'm the asshole guy. I've done it to myself. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we, we belong to this author's group. And one of the things that we, the pieces of advice we all given each other is you have to be in love with your concept because it's going to follow you the rest of oh, your oh. life. Or, or the, but then sometimes the ones you love the most, nobody ever pays any attention to. We so it's not. hard to predict. There's it's so much randomness. I, I love that advice, actually. Yeah. Yes. But, um, but I mean, one of the things that strikes me, and you and I have had a little exchange about this, is, you know, that book. I mean, it's been out for a long time now, but it continues to thrive. And I think that just points to the level of toxicity that so many people experience. So maybe, maybe could you dig into that a little? Because I think we're in this moment of reckoning. Right. Many, many levels. Right. And, and like you, I would like to believe that organizations are capable of being places where people can, you know, become their best selves, yes. do their best work, live a good life with dignity, be paid well, you know, have challenging assignments grow. <laughs> I mean, that's right, how right. I would like to think of organizations, but, but a lot of people don't have that experience. Yeah, a lot of people don't have don't have that experience. Yeah, I mean, I mean just in fact, and I really am trying to avoid using his name because I'm just sick of him. But uh but but Elon Musk just I think yesterday fired somebody who gave him bad news. This mm -hmm. is almost a perfect and, and so and I know a lot of people who work for and even more people who used to work for Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he might be the biggest genius ever. And he's got all these tech bros who love him, but, but people who work for him, he takes away their dignity. Mm -hmm. And my, so, and, and we were talking before. Um, so, and, and a lot of this comes from my two key mentors two uh, well, really three, Bob Kahn, I talked about and, and a guy named, J. Richard Hackman, who is an amazing person, passed away, the, the greatest groups researcher who ever, ever lived. That, and I think of two outcomes. I think of dignity, and I think, yes, I believe that performance or providing great health care or building a great building, whatever your dependent performance variable is, I believe both of those are important, and I believe both of those are possible. Um, and um, and <laughs> And, and 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 if you're somebody who just sort of kills everybody along the way, bless you, you can be like the most wonderful capitalist. I don't want anything to do with you. There's lots of people who do great stuff. And I just to give you an example in a completely different industry, and I learned a lot about them because I had heart surgery there. Uh, the Cleveland Clinic is really a good example of this. And uh, so uh, 12 years ago, I needed open heart surgery. I flew the 2000 miles to the Cleveland Clinic. And uh, they have better heart, heart outcomes than Stanford does. But some of it is that you can just see how people treat one another. They have really high standards for performance. But uh, Toby Cosgrove, who was running the Cleveland Clinic in those days, I met him. He said, I fire people, surgeons, the best surgeons who are assholes. I fire them. Hmm. And, 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 and my, my surgeon, Mark Gillenoff, he told me the same thing. He said, "You, you really, you can't be an asshole surgeon here and survive." It's like, and and I'm, I can tell you at Stanford, you can be an asshole surgeon and survive because I know a lot of them. And 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 and, and so the, the effect of it, and this is a case where it's a virtuous circle. Our friend Amy Edmondson, she, she has all sorts of evidence. Who Amy Edmondson? I just worship Amy Edmondson. I think she's just like a goddess. That woman is so smart and such a good human being. Um, Amy has all sorts of evidence that, well, when the doctor creates fear, people don't tell them when they've made a mistake. Right. And and so, uh, so so anyways, I'm sort of going on a rant. But 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 my argument is and, and a lot of people have different values than I do. And bless you, is that if performance is your only dependent variable, well, we as a species are not in very good shape. And Cleveland Clinic's an example. Uh, Google at various times. Um, has been has been a, a pretty good example, um, and even you know Apple can be kind of nasty, but nonetheless, people the people I know who work for Tim Cook will say he actually that's kind of how he is, and Steve Jobs got better with age, and then our friend Ed Catmull, and anybody ever worked for Ed Catmull will tell you that I mean he did a pretty good job at Pixar building one of the greatest companies ever, and and he treated people with respect. Mm -hmm. So it is possible. So, th so, so this perspective, so, so people always want to have the argument, well, this asshole got ahead 
or um, they got ahead anyways. Well, my perspective is that we as a species, can't we treat each other with some respect mm -hmm. and, and still do great work? It, it appears to be possible and sometimes it even helps.